My name is Helmut Schütte and I'm here to talk about the topic of rethinking East Asia. We look at a world full of political tensions concentrated at this very moment very much on a very small group of little islands, but relate back to the history of the Korean War, the Second World War and other atrocities which have happened during the last 100 and 150 years. It's clear when we compare this with other parts of the world, the European Union in particular, we know to overcome the past takes time. And perhaps the best way forward initially is to do it through closer trade or investment uh, activities. Secondly, one has to take this out of the responsibility of political leaders which have to play to local audiences back at home and perhaps turn to a group of wise men uh, in the sense of bringing civil societies together outside the government. And one shouldn't only look at the old man, the wise man, but perhaps also bring together young leaders, such as the World Economic Forum has young global leaders. Perhaps one should think about uh, setting up a group of uh, young East Asian leaders and bringing them together for exchange of ideas and uh, some revival of a common culture. The third issue which comes to mind is to do more uh, in the area of education. I'm personally amazed how many East Asian families still prefer to send their kids to the United States or to Europe for education rather than to send them to a neighboring country. Much can be done in that respect. The Erasmus program in Europe is a great success by giving 250,000 students a year an opportunity to study in a neighboring country. Something like this would easily be done. Asia has something which one may call the, an Asian paradox. Uh, economically very successful, uh, fast growing, fast developing. Politically, however, still underdeveloped. Both have to come together. Again, this will take time, but it's urgently needed to avoid any more serious developments in and around some small and rather insignificant islands in Asia.